You're listening to Last Word Radio, where you, you get your last word. Welcome to the Fourth Line Podcast, part of the Alberta Podcast Network, powered by ATB. This is August the 27th, 2018, and with you today is myself, Carl, and the always wonderful Joel. Welcome back to the show, Joel. This, what, less than 24 hours since we did the number of the listeners, our fantasy football draft. How do you, uh, how do you think your team fared in that? Um, pretty good. I don't know. I never really know. It's, it was a little... It took a little early to be drafting, so I'm expecting like one of my guys to get hurt. So I just really hope it's not like Ezekiel Elliott. That would be less than ideal. That does sound sound bad. Um, it's not that early because what we're a week and a half away from the season. Yeah, I'm not a huge fan of drafting before a preseason game yet because I don't really want to draft a guy that's going to get hurt in yeah, preseason. But- Zeke's not playing. Zeke didn't even play last week's game. I know. I watched that last night. Pretty sure other guys are going to play. Yeah, I don't think very many are going to for. I think you're safe. I don't know. Scary times. How do you think your team did? I did okay. I got like, I went like, I got really good wide receivers and like Ezekiel Elliott and then like every rookie running back. Like yeah. not named Sequin. How do you say that guy's name? Sequin. Shaquan, Shaquan, Shaquan Barkley. I don't um, even know what I don't even know how it's spelled. I know there's a Q in there, but that's about it. Um, I th- I like my team. I picked second. You picked fourth. Because uh, you, because like, there's a rule where you're only allowed to pick in the top three in any draft you do. It's random, Joel. It's random. I don't believe it. Because like, you literally pick top three in in any fantasy draft I've done with you. You pick top three. That's not true. It's 100% true. I, the only ones I can think of was hockey last year and this one. So, sure, just the last two. You had Connor McDavid on all of your teams last year. Not just the one I was in. All yeah, of but them. that I didn't run the other league. You still picked just, top three somehow. It was just a coincidence. Um, so, yeah, I was, I was fine. I, I got Todd Gurley at two and... The rest of my team's a solid mix of uh, of players. Got some young guys, got some some veterans. I think it'll do pretty well. Your running backs are rough. Um, the fact, yeah, the fact that I have two running backs with a combined age of approximately seventy isn't isn't the best. I'm not convinced either of those. Like you've got McCoy and Adrian Peterson. I'm not convinced either of those guys plays more than like four games this year. No, they will. I told you this during the draft. Is like who else is going to run in Washington? Well, whoever it is, when Peterson's broken because he's old, I'm not. I'm not too worried about that. And Lashawn McCoy is going to be in prison. I I have so you you made that mention to me yesterday. I found nothing anywhere saying that that's going to happen. Like he is for sure. Like there's like like there's a. I'm pretty sure. So, like, the house that he owns, I don't think we really probably want to go into this too much, the details. I think there's a story, I think the story, or, like, the allege, is the house that he owns, and his girlfriend or ex-girlfriend, like, I think she got assaulted or something like that at his house. So, he either, like, he was either, it wasn't by him, but apparently it might have been, like, he hired someone to do it. It's sketchy stuff, though. Well, that's not good. No, it's not. No matter, so, no matter who did the that, not good. Um, let's hope that that's not the case. And uh, yeah, we probably shouldn't talk about that. You're right. Moving on to the world of hockey, not much has happened since uh, since we were last year. Because last week we did a fifth line. Uh, we also debuted the brand new fantasy show, which uh, it was it was good. Speaking of uh, fantasy sports, we did the old fantasy hockey show. Uh, me and Ben Ferguson and. Uh, I think it's going to be a lot of fun. We're going to keep doing it throughout the year. It was well received. No, it's good. Um, I don't know. I really have. I've been like less and less into fantasy hockey. I do. I do like the fantasy football. That's about it. 
And so, yeah, Carl has got a new fantasy hockey show. So now I don't have to pretend to try and talk about fantasy hockey. Ah, it's not like you don't know what's happening. You you hold your own in the fantasy hockey. Yeah, but I just you missed the part because you were gone. I was saying I do less and less. I literally don't have I don't have a fantasy hockey team this year. Are you not uh, not doing the listener league? No, I don't think so. Okay, there you go, Joel. No fantasy hockey. No, just fantasy football. Yeah, I guess if if we were to start a fantasy football <clears throat> podcast, then you could be on that. No, I don't know them. I'm really bad at fantasy football. I just like playing it. I don't really want to talk about it, though. I just like... I'm sorry like, for making you talk about it. No, not like... you know, like I like talking about it just because, like, one of the stuff that I'm involved in, but I don't want to be, like... An, I don't want to pretend that I know what I'm doing in fantasy football. That's what I... Right, you don't want anyone to think you're anything of an expert. Not that anybody thinks I'm an expert at anything, but I don't want to oh. even try... To let people think that. Yeah. I People with, especially like all fantasy sports, but fantasy football in particular, everyone talks about their teams. Like they are well-versed in the depth charts of the Minnesota Vikings wide receivers. They're like, this guy is getting the slot receptions. This guy's the deep threat. So I like him for this reason and this reason. I'm like, he put up good numbers. And it's kind of a crapshoot. That's how I feel about fantasy football. It's just go with who's hot. Don't go with who's cold. That's my hot isn't that like Carl. I was gonna say like isn't that like in any sport or anything in life? Go with the people that are doing well. Don't go with the people that are doing not well. But like, I feel in some sports, in fantasy sports, like hockey has a a twenty three week regular season. Or like in ours, it'll probably be a twenty two week regular season. And football, you have like thirteen weeks. So you don't have the time in football to like let a guy figure it out. Like if it's one week, two weeks, and you're not performing, you're done. You're gone. You're at least benched. And if you're fringe, you're dropped. Like my leash is every year it gets shorter and shorter with guys. I can see that. I can definitely see that, yeah. And like and that's the thing, like with hockey, you just kind of ride it out until you realize that you rode it out too long and then you lose. And then, then sadness hits you, yeah. Um, I don't know, maybe I need to be a shorter leash in fantasy hockey, too. Maybe. We'll see how that know. goes this year. You should um, do drop, drop your first-round pick, like, in week two. Oof. If he doesn't score yet. Probably not a good idea. Um, well, we'll be talking about that and more on the, the fantasy show as we continue. I don't know when the next one's going to be coming out, but uh, in due time, we'll be there. Um. Since we were last year doing a hockey show, there has been one relevant signing. Ryan Ellis, he got a contract. I thought I was Troy Brower. Oh, that that too, yeah. Troy Brower, he signed with the Panthers. And I, lo- I like how you affirmed that as a relevant signing. Yeah. Do you want to? We can also talk about Hunter Shinkarik. Do you want to dive deep into that? That was that one wasn't even just a signing. It was also a trade. Like a signing trade I, that I also wish to gloss over. Yeah. Let's talk about Ryan Ellis. Let's right. talk about that. That sounds a little bit more fun. Yeah, that sounds like someone that we should spend some time on. Ryan Ellis is a, a guy who currently, so he's in the last year of his deal, which is probably the best valued contract in the NHL right now. He's making $2.5 million. For yeah. what Ryan Ellis brings to that team, that is a steal. Yeah, only one year left, and then not so much steal. Then he then it kicks up. He, then he's next next going to be making for eight years average cap it of six point two five. He's currently twenty seven years old, so that deal will kick in and go from the ages of twenty eight to thirty six. I'm okay with it, but it's like whatever. it's it's what he would have got. Like that's market value for Ryan Ellis. Yeah. Do you think, okay, if he had been a UFA this year up against John Carlson, who would have gotten, like, who do you think, you think he would have gotten more? Yeah, probably. Like, because of that? Like, cause what did, I forget what Carlson got. Six by six? Uh, what Carlson? Something like that. Johnny Carlson got eight million per year for eight years. Eight, eight by eight. No. Eight by eight is a lot. Wait, is it, okay. <laughs> 
let's I don't know if this is market value. Yeah, that seems think, now now it seems under market value. Do you think cuz cuz like, Carlson's the same age as when as Ellis will be when the And who would you rather have? I'd probably ra- rather have Ryan Ellis on my team. I think so too. <laughs> like if you had told like I like even before this I was just like yeah, it's like it's about like I was like yeah, he basically got what John Carlson got. I was like no. That's how that's how like boring the summer has been with hockey. It's just like I've just forgotten everything that's happened. Apparently, yeah, um, yeah, definitely. Ryan Ellis over John Carlson, one hundred percent. So especially at like the cap hit now. Yeah. Oh yeah, that yeah, that's what I meant. Like it's it's close ish when you without the cap hit. But if I'm getting one for one and a half plus less, that's nice. What is with this Nashville team in defense. Have we ever talked about this? Like, I know everyone talks about like, They just always have really, really good defensemen. Yeah, I think they... And, like, out of essentially nowhere, like, none of these guys are blue-chip prospects that they've brought in. With, like, obviously, like, Shea Weber was a, a highly drafted piece. The trade for P.K. Subban. But, like, even he, he was a, a second-round pick. It's not like, you know, he is very good, obviously. Um, you know, Ellis was, you know, a high mid first, um, but like just a lot of guys who you're like, Oh yeah, that guy turned into something really, really good. Yeah. It's just, it's just weird. So anyways, like, I guess, is that probably the last, I guess that he wasn't an RFA. Like we'll see, we have a, what, three more RFA deals, like of big guys that need to come in yet. I think I saw there's, there's still 14 unsigned. The guys of note that are still left to sign, Noah Hannafin, uh, Sam Reinhardt, Darnell Nurse, Shea Theodore, and William Wamjana Nylander. Yeah. So there's so there's a few more signings that will come down before or during training camp. I don't think – I haven't heard much about any of these. No, I don't I've, think I've any of them. I think Hannafin is probably the closest out of all of these um, to getting something done. Uh, I saw today Darnell Nurse says that though something will be done before camp. They're pretty close, apparently. So um, those two seem like they'll be uh, locked down beforehand. And uh, I think like the one that, to me, is going to be the most interesting, and we talked about it before, is Reinhardt. Like, we kinda, I have a feeling on what Nylander will get. It just comes down to like bridge or long term. Which, like, which, which do you want for him? I don't know if it. I, di, nobody signs bridges anymore, though. Like it just doesn't seem to happen very often. Not a lot, no. Uh, I don't. I don't think. I want. I, I want long term, and I expect long term, and I expect him to get. Like, well, we've talked about it. I think more than like six by six or something like that. Yeah, that seems, uh, that seems about right. He'll get whatever, like the Pasternak type, the Dylan Larkin deal. Yeah, like that. Like he's in that range. He's not gonna, like he's not in the. He's clearly not in the Eichel range, and he's. I would say he's in that. He's probably even under. I don't know. Would you rather Larkin or Nylander? Probably Larkin. Yeah. See the question in the like, but that's that's the spot though, right? Yeah. I'd, I'd probably rather Pasternak. Oh well, yeah. If if I. Putting those him in the mix, then yes, I thought you meant I thought you meant Nylander or no. Like, that's what I, that's that's what I did mean. But I was okay. saying, and then I was like, if you're doing Nylander or Pasternak, oh, yeah, I would say Pasternak is really not that close. So well, if it's but see the thing is, he's going to get paid about the same. So if it's really not that close, then he shouldn't get paid that much. Yeah, Pasternak was paid on like a he was paid, and then he went off. So that was nice for. Uh, he had one season. Yeah. But like... He had, he had a 70-point season and then got paid. Yeah. So I don't know if that's... I feel like that, like, it was kind of like a... Like, if he obviously had had more than, you know, if he had done this past season where he put up 80 points, he's not getting paid. Which I, I think, it, like, you have, you have back-to-back seasons where you essentially score 35 goals. Uh, you no longer get paid the 6 to $7 million a year. That's a steal of a deal for the Bruins with his repeated production. When he did it is, once, it was like, okay, 
Like we'll pay you because you you'll probably do this again. Now that it's like we know you'll do this again, he's getting more. How much is it him and how much is it Bergeron and Marchand? Uh it's it's a part of it for sure. But I think you look at you know that line and what it brings. You don't they're not splitting that line up, right? And if that's the unit that you have and that's the production that they're bringing, I'm okay with paying him more. A guy who signed a a, a deal at the exact same time almost as him over in Edmonton, and we look at what Dreisaitl got. Well, he he did his big producing with McDavid, and they don't plan to keep him there. That's the kind of situation. Like, well, why why are you doing it? Right? You shouldn't be paying him based on his production in a different setting than what he actually is. I'm fine paying him more if that's where he's going to be. To me, that seems backwards, but that's fine. Like, like I'm like if he, if that's where he's going to be. And he would be not as good somewhere else. Then wouldn't you? But you're, I you're would paying think, him for his production in that situation. If that's the situation he's going to be repeatedly in, then I'm okay with that. Yeah, I'd be. I guess I'm not like. Yeah, I just I'd be. I'm interested to know like like when he doesn't have two players that are better than him on his line. Is he as good as is he as good as everyone thinks he is? Right. Did you want to know the answer to that? Are you checking his wowie? So last year, when David Pasternak played without Patrice Bergeron, he only played played 173 minutes without him and 720 with him. His Corsi dropped from 58 to 45. Yeah. See. When when Brad Marchand left his side, which was for approximately the same time, it was similar. 57 down to 46. Yeah. That said, I would say that anyone's numbers would drop if you take the top two players on the team off of their line. Like, that's not really that reasonable of a situation to look at that comparison and be like, we just replaced, I, looking at the numbers here, they replaced Patrice Bergeron with Danton Heinen for those minutes. You, yeah, you're going are, to get worse numbers. No, but those num- but those numbers would be more sheltered because if you're taking Marchand and Bergeron off your line, those are not going to be against... You're not getting matched up against the top line of the other team then that's trying to shut you down. So you're, ju- so you're getting sheltered. So, like, yeah, it's going to be... You should drop a little bit, but you're also, in theoretically, you should get... M- more sheltered time so you should be able you should have more space to produce more so like you can argue it from both sides you can say well you're taking the best two players off it's like well yeah but the other team's not going to worry about you as much they're going to put their second best defender on you instead of their best defender because they're going to leave their best defender on bergeron and marchand for sure yeah that there is both ways of that um i i look at like so if you were to look at the avalanche and be like well Miko Rantanen, his numbers outside of Nathan McKinnon, not as good, which I don't have them in front of me right now, but they're probably not as good. And I would say that the difference between, on on an average night, the difference between the level of competition and, like, the level of competition you'll get matched up against versus the difference in teammate, I feel like that's a pretty big difference. Yeah, but if you're good, it shouldn't matter. Yeah, but that'll happen it, with anyone. That w- that would happen with literally any player out there. But it so, shouldn't yes. be as dramatic. Okay, fine. It shouldn't be no, as dramatic. I, I, agree. That. I agree. He is he is the worst player on that line, without a doubt. But like it's and it's dramatic. Like he can't. Like to me, that tells me he can't. He like Pasternak can't drive a line on his own. Like which, he's not at that level. Yeah, which I I would look at like some of the guys that he's played with. So like. Danton Hyde in a center, Riley Nash at center. Um, turns out the Bruins don't have a lot of very good centers outside of Patrice Bergeron. Like, he didn't play much with Krejci last year, so that's fine. Um, they don't have like, a really good team outside of that first one. Very true. They put all their eggs in that basket. And, and it works. So, like... Right. Well, and that's that's kind of the way that I'm I look at it, going back to, like, the original thought of... If we're wanting to come up with um, 
like how much should he be paid? We pay him to be part of that line, not to be part of a line with Riley Nash. We're not paying him to drive a line. We're paying him to be a contributing member on the top line with better players. Yeah, I guess I my biggest thing is like continuing to look at I just don't think he Pasternak is kind of like becoming this darling of being completely underrated, underpaid, and I'm not actually convinced of it. Like he is not an eighty point guy without those other two. So he shouldn't be paid like an eighty point guy with like that can do it on his own. This is and like you said, this is the exact same thing with like <clears throat> dry sidle and McDavid like dry sidle better figure out how to play. And I think he did a little bit. He did. Yeah, he did. He did for sure. As, as last year went, but like at the beginning of the season, it was not good, but like he needs to like, I just don't know. Like Pasternak, I just don't know if he can be that guy that when Bergeron, I don't know how, like that guy, how is that guy still playing? That's, I don't get that. But, like, he's he's going to be gone eventually. Can Pasternak be that guy without Bergeron? Jeez, Bergeron's only 33. This guy just lives forever. <laughs> that's, a, that's a fact. Um, this turned into a, a shockingly analytics-heavy take on David Pasternak. Who, who knew that this is uh, – you had this in you? I like it. Welcome to the, welcome to the summer where NHL is – dead so ryan ellis good deal david pasternak one of us likes it one of us doesn't or one of us I'm, thinks it's okay i, I don't I never, yeah i was like i never once said like i'm not saying he's a bad player or anything i just i don't think he's i don't think he's undervalued that's fair i think i think he's just kind of is what it is and if he became a second liner or a first liner on his own everyone would be like why are you paying him so much yeah and i i Definitely agree that that could be the case. Uh, before we get into the summer hot seat segment, speaking of the summer, we've got that coming up. Let's remind everyone about ATB Financial, your place for all things banking. If you have personal banking, business banking, you want to invest your money, uh, if you want a, a house, houses are good. Having a place to uh, head over to atb.com. You can see everything that they have there, atb.com slash listens, where they can find out what your needs are. They're asking you, what do you need? And they're listening. So head over to atb.com, do that. Um, The New Jersey Devils are our summer hot seat team, a resounding victory for the New Jersey Devils. A team returned to the playoffs last year. It wasn't good for the New Jersey Devils the year before. Now they've got an MVP They've got another first overall pick on that team. They're back in the playoffs, and they might have a new person in their front office. <laughs> Broder is going back there, right? Like, do we even really need to talk about this? Martin Broder has left the St. Louis Blues, which is the most confusing team that he could have started working with. Well, he played with them for like a day. He was there for a solid month. Uh, I believe he he played twice. Um very, very solid career for Martin Broder in New Jersey or the St. Louis Blues. But yeah, he's he's going back to New Jersey. Not officially yet, is it? No, but like we assume so. Come on. Yeah. yeah. Come come on. Um so Martin Broder is going back. Not that, that like I don't really think that that matters. I think it's it's something more that like the fans of the team will care about. And everyone else will be like, that's irrelevant, no one cares. Until they Indeed. until they announce what position he's going to take, I guess. Like if they hire him as like the assistant general manager and make him the general manager, then that's that's a different story. Or like the president or something like they've done with Ole Shanny. Kid, do you know who Stefan Nosen is? Yeah. You've heard of this guy before? Yeah. I have no idea who this guy is. Um, are you on his page right now? Don't look where he's from. Let's play. I was going to ask you where he was from. Okay. I would say I will go with somewhere in Europe. I want to say France, but it's probably wrong. I'm going to go with it. France, the United States of America. Oh, but like the French part, obviously, like he's probably from like Louisiana, Arizona. Yeah. See, lots of French people in there. I don't even know. That might not even be a French name. 
It looks I have no idea. I was like, who is this guy? And I only clicked on his name because I was like, let's play the fun game. But, okay, Carl, tell me about, okay, whatever about Birdier. I, like, I'm surprised you talked about him as long as you did. Uh, but where, where's this team? What are they going to do next year? You think, like, repeat, regress, be better? Uh, I think be better. I think they're primed for a be better season. Um, cause this oh. is a pardon I said, wow. Oh, I thought you said how I was like, I'll get, I'll get to that. Yeah, no, it was, it was, I was, sh- I was shocked and amazed. Actually, I wasn't really, but I am a bit surprised. You think, what do you, what do you think? I'll, I'll think get into same. my reasons in a second, but you I think, think they're the same? same. Um, here are my reasons. Reason number one. And I guess I'll, I'll start with like the, the biggest piece on this team, Taylor Hall. Mm-hmm. He will most certainly not reproduce what he did last year. Like, I think I can, I will safely say that last year was Taylor Hall's best season that he will ever have in the National Hockey League. So, sounds like they're getting better next year. I like where you're going. Right, so I'm starting strong. <laughs> I'm starting with a strong case for why they're going to get better. So he had 93 points, besting his previous 80, which was his best before back in the Euler days. And so that's that's... True. Taylor Hall, you know, he missed some time, but even like on a point per game, he's not he's not going to repeat that. But there's a lot of other guys on this team that I think are going to continue to improve. Nico Heischer is 19 years old. He will continue to improve. You had Will Butcher, a guy who, you know, he started pretty hot, kind of cooled down a little bit near the end. Um, but he's a guy that I think you can expect a little bit more out of this year. Um, I also think that it is almost impossible that you will have as bad a season out of Corey Schneider as we saw last year. So I think you're going to get a, a better, healthier Corey Schneider, which means less Keith Kincaid, which is very nice. And uh, so I think you're going to have some better goaltending from that team. And uh, and better goaltending goes a long way. Nico Heischer is a pretty good hockey player. Yeah, he's good at the hockey thing. That's for sure. I just... Because, like, everyone felt... Like, you were, like... I think he, like the year that he was drafted, like would you say everyone was kind of like this is a bit of an underwhelming, and maybe it might have been because you had like the Matthews line A the year before. Yeah, and it, it was like you Nolan Patrick and Nico Heischer, like yeah, but like Heischer, I think is better than I think he's better than what we like everyone was kind of giving him credit. He for. He exceeded my expectations for sure. As like, and I think to come in yeah. and do what he did as a rookie, it's pretty good. And he's going to be better. I was like, the problem, like the one question that I have about this, like Mr. Pavel Zaka, like that guy, everyone like has talked that guy up since his draft. He just really hasn't done much yet. So like he really needs to take a step forward. Yeah. As much as, as much as I agree with you on Schneider, I'm a little like, I don't, this defense, this defensive core is just kind of like, I'm not super excited about it. But they like they made steps to get better last season, right? Like they they did the trade to move out Adam Henrique, bring in Sammy Vatanen. Um they have, you know, like I I like uh obviously Butcher. Andy Green's been with that team for a long time. He's a, a solid piece. Yeah. Like I'm not getting excited about it for sure, but like this defense core got better. And as they got better, they made their way into a playoff spot. Yeah, I just, I think that's, like, it's probably where they're, I'm not sure if you actually saw, like, some of the numbers on Andy Green, if you would say he was, yes, he's been there a long time. <laughs> no, not, he's not, not solid. A solid. What, what, where would you say his uh, relative course he is, for instance? Relative course he for Andrew Green. I would say that his relative course is probably minus three. Uh, if you add a one to the front of that, you are close. It's minus 13? Yeah. Mm, I'm going to go ahead and, and disagree with that. Well, then like, then hockey reference is wrong. I think you're, I think you're looking at old Steve Stantini. Santini. No. Now I'm looking at Andrew Green. My this is confusing. My oh, hockey we... reference says it's minus six. Okay, well, which still, one are you still on? Still not good. Hockeyreference.com. This is that's where I am. This is confusing. Yeah, 
Um, I'm so. Are you sure? Did you search Andrew Green or Andy Green? Andy Green. Oh, I don't know what's wrong. Then I, everything is like messed up here. Yeah. I'm taking a screenshot of this yeah. so that you don't think I'm crazy. I'm but sending you, regardless, I've he's really bad. Picture. Yeah, not as not as good as I, I tried to sell him as. Um, so defense, that's their biggest need for this Devils team. And unfortunately for them, there's not a lot, like there's no defenseman in waiting that's really going to help fix this for them. Did you, were you talking about overall or last year? Last year, Andy Green... Even strength relative Corsi is minus 6.2. Oh, I have no idea then. I'm confused. Because on the one I'm looking at, his overall is minus 6. That's weird. What are you, what are you looking at? I have no idea. That's very, very odd because his overall like career is minus 1.3. Thrilling us trying to figure out what's happening this, with the internet. Welcome to... Welcome, welcome. to... NHL in the summer. Yeah, where no one knows anything about statistics. Yeah, it doesn't matter. He's really that. bad. I found the page that you're on. I don't know how mine said different. That's very, very confusing. Anyways, he's really bad at hockey. Don't ever say he's a solid piece on that defense. Of course, I, I take it back. Um, okay. So they need to add some more defense. That's the thing that they will need. Um, well, they're other, not going to. Well, no, this like it's done. They're, no, they've done, like, this is the team that there will be. But if we're looking at, like, needs for improvement, they managed to add a defenseman in the middle of the season last year, right? Like, Sammy Vatanen was traded midway through the season to this team. It was early on. Yeah, and, like, out of nowhere. So, like, this team, uh, Ray Shiro, he's he's built quality teams in the past. So Yeah, that's one of the weirdest trades, hey? Like, because, like, when does, like, you do, like, a one-for-one one trade where people aren't asking to leave in, like, the early of the season? Yeah, just, like, a, a literal, like, we have needs. They're, like, the Ducks are, like, we have Ryan Kessler on defense or uh, at center. We should probably bring in someone else. Like, all right, let's bring in Adam. We'll give them well, one of these giant lists of defensemen we have. I was listening this week. Um, whatever sports talk i was listening to you had a guy from the ducks on and they were talking about it and he was going on about like ryan kessler being the number two center and like a number two centerman i'm like in what world is ryan kessler a number two centerman anymore like ryan kessler might not even be playing let alone be playing as a number two center if he was healthy if he was healthy like 100 percent healthy 100 percent healthy uh, but like after everything he's gone to. So his new 100% healthy. Yeah, yeah. Whatever that is. He's still maybe a third-line center. Correct. Maybe. Correct. Like, so, I don't know how, yeah, anyways. I it, Jersey probably makes the playoffs again, right? I think that's where um, both these, that's what I think. If I, you think they get better, then yes. Yeah, if they continue to improve, which I said that they do, then yes, they make the playoffs again. Um that's a, a tight uh, division that they're in. And so, like, it, there's going to be, at the top of that division, there's going to be a lot of very good teams, but also some very bad teams for them to feed off of. Right? So, like, as right. they're going to get to play the Islanders, the Rangers, the Hurricanes didn't get better, I wouldn't say. Um, that said, they, they could still bounce back. That's a story for another day, though. Um, so yeah, I, I do still think they're probably still like fringe wild card y though for me. I don't think they're gonna move up. Like I wouldn't put them past Washington, I wouldn't put them past Pittsburgh. So it's like third in the division fighting for a wild card spot. Yeah. This like Kessler contract is really ugly to buy out. Yeah. Like it's not so I'm not even sure you can. Did Anyways. they did they somehow f- like they front loaded it? Or Well it's it's so he makes his hit is six point eight, and his hit for six years. If they were to buy it out at the end of the season. His hit for six years would be two and a half. That's not good. Yeah, like that's a that's a that's a tough buyout. Although Anaheim's not a cap team, so they'd save a they'd save a bunch of money. That's true. They'd they'd save what eight point nine million over the course. Yeah, of the- I take it back. This is probably better to buy out. They, they probably can buy it out if you were like. If this was like a Chicago, a Toronto, a Tampa, 
it would be really difficult to buy out. Yeah, but as because... like a, as an internal, I know some people argue with the fact that um, they are or are not a an internal cap team, but I they still act like one. So um, they'd save six and a half and pay and how and would owe thirteen as opposed to owing twenty. If they bought him out right now? If they bought him out at the end of this season. Okay, at the end of this season, yes. Correct. I don't think you can buy people out right now. You cannot. No. So it'd have to be I like I don't I think like bio period's done. There is ways to do it. If if they had an RFA they could do it. Did you know about that? That you can buy out an RFA right now? No. So if you have an RFA seven days or something like that after you sign the RFA, you can buy out someone. There's really? some sort of, there's some sort of RFA provision. And you know and so like they took they could. They have Nick Ritchie. He's not signed yet. So they could so if they sign Nick Ritchie, they could still technically buy out Ryan Kessler, except that Ryan Kessler's hurt right now, so I don't think they can. That's a but real, like if he if he was problem. healthy yeah, there is this weird provision. I'm going to look it up sometime because okay. I'm not going to do it right now because we've had enough looking up random things right in the middle of our show today. But we should have, we should do that. Maybe we should. Maybe we'll do that next week. Like just is weird, like, weird cap rules, or just weird, like weird things about the NHL, like that, like little known facts about the NHL. Yeah, um, I have found. I, like I found the air, an area that would probably talk about it. Um, Wait a second. Okay. How will we play a game with our listeners? Okay. If I don't know how we're going to do this, but we'll figure it, we'll uh, we'll figure it out, or we'll, we'll figure it out right now. Um, yeah, let's let, let's can, half bake. Let's fully bake this half baked idea. Okay. If you send in something, whether Twitter, email, Pinterest, however you message us, if you send in An something, letter. yeah, snail mail. That's fine. Something that we didn't know about the NHL, like a rule or like a loophole or something. Like if you're maybe if you're the only one that sends in something that like stumps us, we'll send you something. Or if like a bunch of people stump us, which is probably likely going to happen, we'll like throw all the names in a hat and give one person something. I like that. Or something. I don't know. Well, like, I like this one. We find the craziest, like the weirdest. Oh rule yeah, that we didn't know about. Like we, I cannot believe that that's an actual thing. I like it. Whichever one shocks us the like... most. Shock okay, us. We'll, we'll figure something out. Where, but like it's like like we talked about. Was it last week or the week before? The dog days of summer. We're we're not at the NHL. Like training camp hasn't started yet. We're getting close. But like, let's get some. Let's get a little weird NHL rules. Yeah. I believe here's a, I think what you're thinking of with the bio, just so that we can take this off the table so no one gets to use it. There is a rule with regards to arbitration. So there's an exception. Which would be an RFA. Yeah. So here it is. There's an exception. This is from our friends over at Cap Friendly. There's an exception to the bio period. If the arbitration was club selected and the player did not receive a qualifying offer. In this case, a minimum of two arbitration cases are necessary to trigger the bio period outside. So, I skipped the first part of this story and went straight to the second part. Clubs are permitted to perform a buyout outside the regular period during the 48-hour period beginning on the third day after the final of A, a settlement of the club's final arbitration case, or receipt of the club's last arbitration award. A buyout can only be performed on a player who was on the club's reserve list at 3 p.m. on the most recent trade deadline and for the 2018 offseason must have a cap hit of at least 3.3 million. So if you have someone that goes to arbitration and you had someone who's making more than 3.3, who was on your team since the trade deadline, you can buy them out after your arbitration cases are done. Or just settled arbitration. It doesn't say... Because I think you said you said settle, which means if you go like if you both if you both file for arbitration but settle before you actually get correct. there would count as well. Yeah. So if you go so, to arbitration with anyone, um, if the arbitration was club selected and the player did not receive a qualifying offer, you need two arbitration cases to happen to be able to buy someone out. So I feel like that's a 
a way of them to allow if you grossly miss if you grossly underestimated what that arbitration amount would be that's that's the way you can get out of it they're like look if you really screwed up on arbitration you didn't think you were going to go there um the player chose to go to arbitration you didn't you didn't want to you didn't want to have to sign this contract you have to we're going to let you buy someone else out that's that's the reason behind it is it not oh definitely it's like it's like hey you are not going to lose i don't know what raquel's cap situation like i don't know but you're not going to lose raquel because you have ryan kessler right so you can buy out ryan kessler and keep the young player yeah yeah we're not gonna like and because you have to be within like i know the offseason there's like you can go above the cap to a degree um they don't they're not going to force you to like well we just have to release this guy after his arbitration because that's that seems bad um, something else that happens in the off season, kind of in spring training, not spring training, training camp, nothing happens in spring training because it does, um, training camp is video games. The NHL releases their NHL, EA releases NHL this year, NHL 19. And for me, NHL, I think the first one that I had, I've been playing since 99 was the first one I had for myself. So this is the 20th anniversary for me of playing this series of games. I don't get it every year, but uh, I at least play a version of it every season. And, uh, you know, always something that I look forward to is seeing the changes that are coming in the next version of the NHL series. I think I had in 98. It was the first one I played. No, I definitely played 98. I just don't know if it was in 98 or not. Right, so ninety eight was Forsberg on the my my first one, and I'll I'll confirm was Lindros on the covers. Yeah, that's ninety nine. Yeah, um, yeah, it was definitely Forsberg, and I always because I was like me, I was like ten at the time or whatever. Yeah, and so I played Team Canada versus Team Japan. Team Canada versus <laughs> Team Japan was a huge game to play because you would score all the goals. Yeah, and it went through like a number of iterations on like how I would play it. So like. I never had the console, but like played on 64 with friends. I, my first version of it was a P. Um, and so like just lots and lots of NHL. That was the first sports game I ever had was NHL, uh, shortly followed by. Yeah. I don't know what, I don't know what year I started playing Madden. Eddie, did Eddie George year? That was the same year I started playing. No, was it was, it was either Eddie George Sanders. or Marshall Falk was the first I year played, I started playing. I play, I've, played the Barry Sanders one as well but I don't know like again I don't know when I played it but I those are the ones I have played yeah I don't know so I I haven't played Madden in a while like I haven't I haven't it's been a few years since like I bought a game well we we actually we busted out the the Madden a few weeks ago and realized that we Madden 16 is the one that we can play together there you go um Lots, lots happening this year. Lots of new things. Um, but sports games in general have moved towards the like the NHL. NHL calls it the ultimate team, which is they're like, hey, we want to make micro microtransactions show up in a hockey game. We're going to make you work really hard to earn stuff, or just give us money for it. Um, how do you feel about like that trend in sports games? Because like Madden does it, MLB The Show does it with their game now. NHL does it. Are you okay with that? Yeah, I don't care. Do you, do you play them? Uh, yeah. I do the hockey one. I did this past year, but I don't put any money into it. Like, I just play, which means I'm re- usually worse than everyone else. Yeah, because some, like, spoiled 12-year-old gets all the good players. Yeah, so, which, but I'm fine with it. I, I just wish, like, there was, and they, they, you know, they put in, was it last year they put in the threes version? Um which was a, a ton of fun for NHL, but there's just like I wish there was more time invested into um, like the, the franchise mode, which is what I do. Like I'm not, I'll play online, I'll I'll go win the odd game, but I wish that they were investing more time and energy into like making franchise mode more like actually running an NHL franchise. What would change about it? Because it's pretty intensive. Yeah, because like you you scout. You draft, and you do, unlike most games, you actually do the full draft. I guess not most games. Baseball, they don't make you do all, like, 50 rounds of the draft. 
That's probably for the best. Um, I don't think you would enjoy doing that. No, probably not. I wish that you could have simultaneously running um, because like they have the other leagues present, like they have like the SHL and they have the WHL. I wish that that was something that would like simultaneously run as you were doing franchise mode. So like I I could see okay, these are the players who are going to be available in next year's draft. Well, how many points does generic player Y have? I wish that I could see that, and that's not something I can have. Or this guy in Europe, like how good is he playing in random league? I want to know. I want to sign that guy. I want to sign a guy from the K. You play games much differently than I do. Because I, I try it for like a game or two. And then I'm just like, forget this. And I just make all the trades. Or I like go like to like where you can just like change the rosters. And put all my favorite players on one team. And then just go and roll everybody. That's fun. I always do I have one of those too. Um, yeah. I, I I trade all the time, which is why I want more. Like I want a wider range of moves that I can make because I will always tinker with my team to make them better. That's what I want. Yeah, who's your uh, – so if you're playing, who's your top line? Like which, what's what three guys – like or five guys, I guess. Yeah. Who's your top line? All right, I'm going to go Connor McDavid at center. I'm putting Nathan McKinnon on the right wing. This isn't – you gotta use like the same positions. You can't change positions. McKinnon last year in fantasy hockey had right wing eligibility. Okay, in real life, what position did he play? Uh, he played a lot of center. Okay, so he's got to be a center, man. <sighs> Fine. Don't change this up. Then, you want it to be more realistic? Welcome to it. Yeah, r- realism is being able to put someone wherever we want. If I want to play guys both ways in Madden, I want to be able to. You used to be able to do no. that. You gotta, ch- you gotta choose, man. Center, left wing, right wing. You can't, can't change it up. All right, I'm going to go uh, center. I love me some McKinnon, but I'd probably go McDavid, Patrick Kane, Ovechkin. And then on defense, I'd probably go Eric Carlson, Victor Hedman, with Braden Holpe in net. What position does Carlson play? Defense. Yeah, but what side? Oh, I don't. I think they, they both play right, do they not? So you're telling me that if. If and when Tampa trades for Eric Carlson, they're not putting him and Hedman on the same pairing? They better not. Don't you think? They can't put them on the same. You don't want to put those guys. Hedman shoots left. What does that mean? If you shoot left, you're on the right side, right? Typically. I'll forget how that works. <clears throat> so what does Carlson shoot? I, I, I told you. I don't pay attention to those things. Man, you do not. This is not realistic. Oh, uh, you're like, I want to make this more realistic. And then you're just like, let's just put guys all over the place. Sooner or later, you're just like, you know what? Forget when, when, Carlos. Let's just put a Vetchkin back there. Let's just do that. I'm down with that. The way that NHL makes it work, if you want to have a realistic uh, overtime setup, you have to put a forward on defense because they're like, every team is going to have a forward in 2D. So you have to go replace one of those D with a forward. I'm, I'm doing it for overtime. I'm doing it for regular. It works. They shoot opposite. You're okay. Whew. See? There we go. Thank goodness. There you go. That's my that's my okay. matchups then. McDavid, Ovechkin, Patrick Kane, Hedman Carlson, Holpe. What do you have? You Boston play- Matthews. Okay. That's at which position? Center, obviously. Come on now. I'm not a monster. Uh this is my top line. So I'm gonna go Austin Matthews. Mitch Marner, Jonathan Goudreau. Interesting. Dude, Goudreau is unreal in NHL video games. Well, and... That guy's so good. He is. In, going into this year, he has the rating of number 90. He's the 20th ranked player in NHL 19 this year. There you go. So no problem there. Because they have, they have released the top 50 players available. Uh, no surprise who the top are. You have McDavid as number one. You have Crosby. You have uh, Ovi. Drew Doughty slots in as the the first uh, defenseman at a 92 rating. And Carey Price also a 92 as the top goaltender. Um, there you go. Not a, not a lot of surprises beyond that. It's just kind of like a, a mishmash of like, here's everyone who's really good and they're about transferable depending on what skills you want. Um, yeah. You can look through that, head over to EA Sports, and you can see all of what you would have there. Um, any any other news? I guess we should decide which uh, which teams are next up 
in the the summer hot seat uh, segment. NHL teams in alphabetical order. Last time we had the New Jersey Devils, the New York Islanders, New York Rangers, and Ottawa Senators leaving us this time with... That can't be right. No, I moved them. Philadelphia Flyers, Pittsburgh Penguins, St. Louis Blues, and San Jose Sharks are the four teams that we could be talking about on next week's episode. Any of those stand out to you? You don't have to I'm not say. Not about any of those. You're, I'm okay with any of those. Yeah, there's uh, you know, lots of things on all those teams. Good teams. Um, so not a lot of laughter at what they do. Um, <laughs> then we'll have what one, two, three, four. Five. There's five teams left after that, so we'll see. Maybe we'll do... Twitter only has five, so maybe we'll just eliminate... Well, there's actually six. The Leafs, as mentioned, get skipped over. Maybe we'll just eliminate uh, the Capitals, because we talked a lot about them, because they want to yeah, Stanley Cup. Yeah, fine with that. Um, we can decide next week. We can decide next week, because this coming one, Philadelphia Flyers, Pittsburgh Penguins, St. Louis Blues, and San Jose Sharks, head over to our Twitter, at Fourth Line Podcast, where you can find out uh, and let us know. Tell us on the old Twitter poll, which will go up as soon as this episode is ready, who you want to hear us talk about. In the same way we talked about the Devils this week, uh, not in the same way we talked about the Minnesota Wild last week. Uh, a very different way than we talked about them. Because um, we'll probably actually talk about those teams. Probably. I, I imagine so. Yeah, there's no reason no reason not to talk about them. They're uh, good teams with lots going on. Um, the Alberta Podcast Network is going to be a big part of the Edmonton Fringe Theater Festival, which just wrapped up. Um, so if you if you had a chance to go do that, then uh, very, very good. Um, they're also going to be part of the uh, Social Enterprise Boot Camp. So if you are one that wants to take part in that, you can head over to atb.com, Alberta, sorry, albertapodcastnetwork.com, um, and you can see all kinds of things. Uh, tons going on with the Alberta Podcast Network. Uh, lots of uh, things. There's something called Lit Fest, Joel. Uh, Lit Fest is happening. Um, it's not as exciting as some may think. It's literature. It's a literature festival, um, which personally I would not think is lit. However, to each their own. Yeah. So that's all Joel's got for me on that one. Um, you can head to Lit Fest if you want. Uh, early bird passes are on sale until tomorrow. So hurry. If you want to go to Lit Fest, make it happen. Uh, you can find us at Fourth Line Podcast on Twitter, fourthlinepodcast.com, thefourthlinepodcast.com. We're on the Facebook. You can mail us on the email, mail at thefourthlinepodcast.com as well. And uh, send us your DMs. Let us know some of the weird rules that you think we don't know about in the NHL. And we will uh, read your submissions next week, especially if, if they're good. They, if, if no one can stump us, if it's like we knew all of those rules, we're skipping it in disappointment. Not going to be good. Until next week. Boom City.